ask people what they first think of when they hear late 1700s, they will usually respond with famous events such as the Revolutionary War, the making of the Constitution of the United States, or maybe even the French Revolution. But many people are not aware of all the other important conflicts also happened at this time. One of the most overlooked compromises during the same period of time is the Treaty of Canandaigua. The year was 1794. The Revolutionary War had only just ended and the people of the United States were certainly not looking to start another war. The Six Nations had been fighting with the government for years and were threatening to revolt when a compromise was finally made. This compromise was called the Treaty of Canandaigua. But first, let's back up in history a little bit and take a look at the events that led up to this moment. The Six Nations are an Iroquois confederacy that was founded in 1722 and is made up of six separate territories in New York. They are the Cayugas, the Mohawks, the Oneidas, the Onondagas, the Senecas, and the Tuscaroras. The government of New York wanted their land to make new roads, dams, and other advances, so they traded illegally with the Six Nations and deprived them of land that was rightfully theirs. Finally, they could no longer stand that they were being taken advantage of and went to the capital to speak up for their rights. When George Washington heard about the Six Nations, he feared that they would come together and start a war against the government. Since the United States was still trying to recover from the Revolutionary War, he did everything he could to appease the Six Nations. And said, we need to have a treaty. We said, we have the Treaty of 1775. We have the Treaty of 1776. We have the Treaty of 1784, Fort Stanwix. We have the Treaty of 1789, Fort Harmer. He said, we need another one. Canandaigua. George Washington finally called all of the Six Nations to a meeting on December 29, 1790, and gave a speech saying that he wanted the United States and the Six Nations to be truly brothers. In his speech, he also said that the United States promises to protect their land and that each year he will give them money as a token of friendship to the chiefs of the tribes. As a physical symbol of their peace, George Washington also makes a wampum belt that depicted 13 men all holding hands, a symbol of the 13 colonies uniting. And the two smaller figures, along with the house, represented the Six Nations. That was made by your president, George Washington, as a promise to the Six Nation Confederation that we would have peace and security in our lands as long as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, as long as the river runs downhill, and as long as the grass is green. November 11th, 1794, the Treaty of Canandaigua was signed by the government officials and the chiefs of each of the Six Nations. The Treaty of Canandaigua has since then become one of the most important documents to the Six Nations and is celebrated every year since the signing. This annual event is called Canandaigua Day and is celebrated on November 11. It has gained recognition by many more Americans and even caught the eye of Bill Clinton. Clinton wrote a letter commemorating the treaty and describing how important it is that we honor the treaty. To this day, the treaty has not been broken and the Six Nations have celebrated their 223rd Canandaigua Day as of 2017. <laughs>